hi guys welcome to our youtube channel we are the bebon kings so we recently we started a series on dating and we talked about a couple of things already but in this slot we'll be talking about managing sexual pressure while in courtship or while dating um i think one reality that hits you when you start dating or when you're in courtship is how your sexual urges changes I was disciplined i felt that i was self-controlled until we began dating that's when i knew that i had i had what all other men had you see in courtship i don't know but because there's this sense of this is going to be my wife is going to be my husband you 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 kind of you are comfortable and free i mean that sense of comfort and free also triggers your hormones and you start secreting hormones mm. and at the, at the higher level and so it, your urges are different in a courtship so usually if you don't handle these urges rightly before you know it and fornication personally too i i think that reality too was was one thing that dawned on me when Tell i got you. into courtship because i was like ah what's the big deal like i felt like i felt like people were talking about about this this fornication way too much because i was like but the bible says says you should not so what's the big deal like it's something it's something that when you get in scotch okay we've decided to stay chased there's nothing there's nothing we need to do there is no effort we need to put in and automatically ah automatically we'll find that we've conquered it but i was surprised that it's something that both of you as a team you intentionally work uh, intentionally work towards that common goal that's staying chaste until you get married mm. so one thing that worked for us was the fact that we had a supervised relationship so a relationship coach a marriage coach they made it in such a way that when we had planned retreats when we had planned outings first they ensured that they ensured that the, the location of the activity was in an open place like it was not in a place where we could easily give in to the urge to want to touch each other and when we were going for such outings we had to to take pictures of when we met of the different activities we carried out and when we were going home when he 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 saw me off and when he was leaving all those may seem you may be like it's old school you may be like it's too much it's too much like what's what's with it can't we have privacy in our mm. relationship but believe me if your goal is to stay chaste excuse me if your goal is to stay chaste until marriage you'll see that it's not exaggerated you rather see it as a protective mechanism Measure. for you you'll see yeah. that it's for your own safety courtship succeed under supervision so babe like initially when our relationship coaches told us that that's what we're supposed to do what was oh, what, was, what was going on in your head like did you like were you like in your head were you like fine it's okay about what exactly like did you see it okay that you need to be giving those kind of mm, okay 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 initially i felt like Mm, is it necessary but uh, before getting to courtship i already i'd done some personal research and i knew that having counselors is the best way to go about it so already i had a preparation but when they were saying it i kind of feel like do, will i need it it's not too much i mean i can control myself i mean i have the things in check but when we started dating that's when i knew that i needed help really because it's has not just some some improper behavior and i feel that apostle paul not knew this thing and that's why he said it in in, in a book of um Was it corinthians? corinthians yes corinthians i think seven he said if a man behave unseemly or improper towards his virgin let him marry i mean if you have that kind of improper behavior because i mean when you see a, a, an open sex that you you are in love with or you want to marry you develop improper behaviors or your feelings make you imp having uh, developed improper behaviors and before you know it if not properly controlled you are fornicated already and that's why paul said let him do what marry so your next goal should be married so i think that one of the key things to handling your sexual pressures when in courtship or when you're dating is making sure your relationship is supervised and the second thing is making sure that you don't meet in secret or lonely places mm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like if you meet in these secret or lonely places, you have somebody whispering on your shoulders. Hey, 
mm. mean, kind of. I mean, it's <laughs> it, it's dramatic, but that's Literally. what practically happens. If you, if you, if you do a center of all relationships that have had those problems, they will tell you that the reason they they were exposed to that level was because they would found themselves in places they should not have been, or in places that were lonely for them or secret. So one of the key things is making sure you don't find yourself in these places. The scripture even help us to to emphasize on it: flee appearance of evil. Yeah. I mean, so being in being in a lonely place with with someone you are to get married to is an appearance of evil. Yes, it's an appearance of evil in that phase of your life, yes, in that courtship. It's an, an appearance of evil. After you get married, the, it's it's yeah, not yeah. evil. You can yes. you can be there for as long as, as you, you want. want. But if your goal is remaining chaste until marriage. Like the pressure to me, it's it's nothing. The pressure that you get, like having to control, to control your emotions. Yes. You know when you are in this, you are in this secluded place with your fiance or fiancé. To me, it's and to me, it's a battle that you can avoid by simply yeah. just not being there. Just being there. And you notice that when you are in an open place, when you are in an open place, those thoughts don't. Don't like yes, yes, don't, easily come don't to easily your pop mind. Up, yes. But when you find yourself now, okay, it's just me and you. Mm. Like, like somebody like does that pouring the thoughts in yeah, your mind. Yeah, like you said, it's like something is whispering to you. <laughs> yeah, literally. like literally, it's like it's whispering to you. And if you start, even if you you even if God opens your spiritual eyes to see an angel standing there, it will be so you difficult for you to stop. So it, it's it's key to me. It's a key yeah. point. If you can respect even only this one, I think that you are good to go. And I think that if you if you, if we succeed to make sure because in, if you are in courtship and you don't succeed to harness your, your sexual pressures, it will still affect you when you get married. Yeah. So the pathway to faithfulness in marriage, or to fight against adultery, is making sure you have a good courtship. Yeah. Learning that in courtship it will help you greatly. The next key point you must keep in mind to fight sexual uh, pressure is that you should not have a secret relationship. Avoid having secret relationship. People should know that you are you are in courtship with A or B. Don't keep it. When you keep it, sin strive in secrecy. When you you hide things, you keep things secret. Sin can easily uh, overwhelm you, and that's why one of the ways the Bible gives us to fight against against uh, against certain type of sin is making sure you share your thoughts one to another that you might be what be saved. So, making sure your relationship is open, it's known by your authorities. The, all the authority figures in your life will go a long way to save you. These people, will, one, they will cancel you, two, they will pray for you. God will, may reveal a lot of things that you are about to go through to, through these authority authority figures. And so make use of them. Make sure it's not secret. And if you are with a partner that wants to keep it secret, refuse. It will lead you into, into serious problems. Just imagine, I don't know that these two are in a, in a relationship and I see them. I mean, I mean, not really, but if I'm knowing, I'm like, huh? I mean, certain things will come in your mind and it's very important not to keep a secret. I it's remember right. when we, when uh, my husband started behaving improperly towards me, mm-hmm. or I started behaving properly towards you. Was it vice versa? Vice versa. Okay, so we got to our counselors. We came for our usual counseling session, and and uh, our counselor was like, "Has he started wanting to touch you? Like seriously? I if I imagine if I lied at that point, mm. that I believe that we would have plunged deeper." Into in, in, into into uh, into immorality. So I told him that yes, and telling him yes now he 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 how do I say it? He put more emphasis, emphasis yes. on our protective measures. Like when we're going now, they always make sure that they checked on us to make sure that we're supposed to, they, to make sure that we're where we said we were going to. And to me, it was to me it was really a protective measure. I really don't know how to. I really, yeah. I really don't know how to say it. So our next our next step on on how to protect I mean manage sexual yes pressure. manage sexual pressure is fleeing when you find yourself in a position that could jeopardize Jopardize. your your commitment to stay in chaste until marriage so if you find that okay the other person is luring you to his or her place you who is in your right sense at that that time time. it's you who has to protect has to protect the relationship at that time because you really find you really find that both of you are in the same in the same uh, state of mind like he may want to touch you but you you find that you have control over yourself so it is for you to 
flee. It's for you to help him and to help yourself, you flee. Or it could be another time that, okay, she could be luring you to come to her house just to spend time with her. But you, in your, you in your mind, you know that if I go to that mm. house, it's a slaughterhouse, slaughterhouse for me. Slaughterhouse for you. So I said, okay, I'm sorry, you cannot meet here. Can we meet instead here? Yeah. So it helps to save you from... All those traumas yes. and things you may not be able to come out easily. Another thing we also we applied was making sure uh, using our friends as check measures. I mean, when my wife and I want to go to I mean some outings, we had a friend of us, a friend of ours that will accompany us. I mean, be with around and making sure that we keep to the commitment. And he went a long way to help us. And in this our modern world, where most of us we are in the information age. We easily play with certain things that the Bible encourages us not to joke with. I mean, I, I have noticed a lot of us, many relationships now, they, will, they, they, they start having sex before, way before marriage. And when they now, you, you see the, the way their marriage look like, it's like a phantom of what it's supposed to be. Because, like I say, the reason why I emphasize, and I think the Bible is emphasizing on um, fleeing from sexual immorality, is that it clouds your judgment. Any relationship that starts with sex, the relationship can really not see the pertinent aspect of the relationship. And usually when there's sex, you see, there's, the vision is really not there again. I mean, there's no... You find yourself not in a haste to marry. I mean, you're like, oh, master, if... What, what else? I what? Mean, what else? I mean, it clouds you. And then now when you finally get married, then you are not surprised that there are certain things you did not notice. And also sex has a way it, it clouds your mind. When you're having sex, you tend to like, okay, it's okay. It's manageable. We will handle it. Okay. It's it. But that's not what happened in marriage, though. because and that's why you must your fight. Eyes. Yeah. And so when you are into into sexual activity prior to marriage, when you enter marriage, as I say, marriage will open your eyes. You notice that it's not it's not all about sex. It's not. There are many things are play to make even sex enjoyable. But you, if you are into fornication, it will blur your mind from seeing appropriately. So I encourage you. It's possible to have a courtship. It's possible to have a dating relationship that is void of sex. Uh. Of sex that is void. It's possible, and we insist because we have we realize that it has a way it it eats of your your relationship. It eats the quality, the depth of your relationship. You see, if you date somebody for three years and you people did not have any sexual activities in the relationship, it's easier to trust that person, have confidence. But if you had been there. No moan passes when people have not had sex. And they people get married. You can easily believe the rumors of your relationship because in your mind you remember how you used to sneak and I mean many things. It will be difficult. And you, you must have uh, weakened your partner from being able to control or build self-control. Because sexual pressure exposes us. When we are in courtship, we are exposed to high degrees of sexual pressure. And when we overcome, it's almost the same thing you find in marriage. Somebody wants to, you notice how, because you had the, the glimpse of how to manage it then, you now understand how to handle it when you get to marriage. But when you fail, huh, it will not be easy when you get married. And that's why you see funny, um, adultery is very common in marriage because many people joke with that initial step. And they think that in marriage, they are going to, I mean, fly past it. That's not true. You are going to face that in marriage too. As we conclude, I just want to encourage you that it's possible to stay chaste until marriage. It's true we had some few ups and downs, but we were able to meet our goal. It means that you too, you can meet your goal. So we encourage you, if you like our content, please like, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, please share, share the link to this content and click on the notification bell so that once we drop a new video, you will be the first to know about it. Wow. Okay, thank you. God bless you. See you.